All right, now that we've covered how to calculate out conditional probabilities, uh, we are ready to start tackling one of the most important ideas of probability, and it's this uh, concept of independence. Okay. Okay, so we can, in fact, use the concept of conditional probability to check whether or not two events in fact are independent of from one another. So we can see where some things are very very dependent and we can see that straight from our conditional probability. So let's consider for a second the probability of A given B. Now we know that the probability of A given B just from pure uh, conditional probability is equal to the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B. Okay. Oh, one thing to note, like the intersection, so A intersect B is identical to saying the intersection of B and A. Uh, so we can flip these around, no problem. Flipping A and B here is a radically different thing because this is the probability. What's the probability of A given that B has occurred? That's different from saying what's the probability that B has occurred given that A has already happened. Uh, so just know that like over here, we can flip the order. Over here with the conditional probability, uh, we cannot. Okay, but so this is just our basic uh, our basic scenario. Now, if our conditional probability comes out to be this, let me make any, uh, yeah, so this is just standard conditional probability. This is just by definition. This is our conditional probability. Okay, things are independent. So two events Two events, and we'll have our two events be A and B. Two events are independent if and only if, uh, if and only if, you'll also see mathematicians write it like this, and if with two Fs, if and only if, the following is true. Let's write this up here. Probability of A given B equals the probability of A. So occasionally this happens. Occasionally we see that the probability of A given that B has occurred is equal to the probability of A. When that happens, we see that even though that the event B has occurred, it has no impact on the probability of A. Now, there, we can go through and check and how some of our events are set up. Sometimes, um, sometimes these independent events come out and sometimes they don't. But if this is true, then we know that the probability of event A and the probability of event B are independent uh, from one another. So that, that's a mathematical check. Now one thing that a lot of people get confused or they, they conflate with one another uh, is that they think that independence means the same thing as mutually exclusive. And that is not true, not even close. Uh, because once again, we know that these events are independent if and only if the event B doesn't affect um, the event A. And we know that with mutually exclusive events, we know that if they are mutually exclusive, this intersection is equal to zero, and it just kind of all, all falls apart. Uh, unless if like the probabilities for the events are zero, uh, mutually exclusive events uh, are in fact dependent events. So anyhow, that's just kind of a, a, a side note that just remember, except in really weird situations, 
mutually exclusive events are dependent. So yeah, so we can check to see if something is independent or not. So let's go back to our original scenario and we can do a, uh, a quick check. So we have our A, we can have that B, sorry, that is a terrible bracket, but we'll go with it, 2, 4, 6, and we'll have B equals to be 1 and 2. And so we've done this one already to find this probability, uh, but let's just do it again just for kicks. Okay, so we know that this conditional statement using these values is going to be equal to, uh, we've got uh, one out of six for the intersection of the two, and we've got two out of six for the probability of B, and so this guy right here is equal to 1 divided by 2. The probability of A, given that B has already occurred, is a 50% chance. All right, so we know that this guy equals 1 divided by 2. And we know that the probability of A on its own is equal to 3, uh, 3 divided by 6. Uh, yeah, 3 divided by 6. And so that guy equals one another. And so here we are able to see that the probabilities of A and B are indeed uh, independent from one another. We can, we can see that if A given B is equal to 1 half, and the probability of A is equal to 1 half, or you know, 3 divided by 6, uh, then that equals a one another, and we have independent events. Now you can go from it from that direction, or we could go for go at it from the other direction. Let's give it a shot real quick, uh, and we can verify to make sure uh, that indeed these are independent. Because it the independent check while the numbers will be different, they will still be equal. If we find independence one direction, we will find independence the other direction. But let's just let's walk through it, and so I can show you. Okay. So here we go. We will look at the, let me erase these guys down just a little bit. Okay, so we will now do the probability of B given A has occurred. And we'll say if A has occurred, the intersection, well the intersection is going to be the same. It's still 1 divided by 6. And this time, though, the probability of A, since we've got A on, on the right-hand side, that guy is 3 divided by 6. And so when we do that, that guy is going to come out to be 1 divided by 3. So we've got one-third there. Okay, so now we need to know what is the probability of B. Well, the probability of B is, in fact, right there. We've got 2 divided by 6. So we've got, uh, let me just bring it over here. So probability of, we're trying to see if this is true. B given A is equal to the probability of A. And there we have 1 divided by 3, which we calculated from over there. And then the probability of a, oh, sorry, this needs to be the probability of B. I had that miswritten up there, sorry. The probability of B, and that is 2 divided by 6, which is equal to 1 third, and so check. Yep, A and B are independent from one another, which is kind of cool. Okay, now what we can also do is we can also run a check on, let's see if C, remember, C was a independent, or it was a mutually exclusive event. That was the one that was 3 comma 5. Let's see if A and C are independent from one another. Let's do this exact same thing. So the probability of A, given that C has occurred, 
So if C has occurred, it means that I've rolled a three or a five. That means that I have not rolled any of those. So the intersection is going to be zero divided by the probability of C, which is going to be two divided by six. And that gives me the probability of zero. So now we have the probability of A given C. I want to see is that equal to the probability of A. And so this one is zero, but I know that the probability of A is one half. That is not true. So A and C are dependent events. Anyhow, that's how you go through and check to see if two events are independent from one another. Uh, it's not just like this. Uh, it has really nothing to do with mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive actually most of the time is dependent. It is possible for them to be independent, but it's some weird situations. Um, but we can just run the math. We can use our conditional probabilities check to see if it's equal to the probability of this first thing. And if that is true, then we have independent events.